guys hungry? You guys are hungry? Good boy. Sit, little girl. Sit. Good girl. What is going on everyone? There is really not a whole lot going on here. Hey little girl, what are you doing? Going to say hi to daddy. <laughs> what you doing, huh? So yeah, there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, I guess I could say I'm in between projects. Um, as you've seen in the in, earlier in the video, um, the nights have been pretty cold here. Low 20s. Um, normal for this time of year uh the day times are pretty nice 40s 50s and today we're getting 60s beautiful sunshine it got a little warm in here so uh in the morning i got to make sure i get out here early enough before the sun starts coming up and open the doors and things like that i had to open the sides up uh, it's extra sunny today <laughs> so things are warming up in here really good so but right now it's perfect got a little cool breeze coming in uh, you don't want to stress the plants out, get them too hot in here. And vice versa, you don't want to get them too cold either. That's why we close it up at night. So to help maintain the temperature. Otherwise, uh, certain plants will start to bolt, like the lettuce and stuff, if it gets too hot. Um, so, but yeah, we've been eating some very delicious, tasty lettuce. Um, love eating. There's nothing like eating fresh lettuce. Just pick it, rinse it and make a, a wonderful salad with it. It's fantastic. A little olive oil and I like a little lemon juice. Salt and pepper, whatever. And uh, very simple, very basic, and I love it. Sometimes I put some feta cheese on there. Uh, love feta cheese. Um, make it how you want, but boy, I'll tell you, nothing like a homemade fresh salad from your own garden. Things have been kind of cool here at night, so Chicken water in the morning, I have to break the uh, water up. It doesn't actually freeze it solid, like the, the tank portion of it. Um, but uh, the, the bottom portion, uh, it freezes up, so I have to break it apart. Let's see, we are nearing the end of January here. <clears throat> in a couple of weeks, within the first week or two of February, I have to start my seedlings indoors for my garden, uh, for my spring and summer garden. Uh, so that will be in a couple of weeks. I, usually what I do is I start them inside a month before your, your last frost. So our last frost is mid-March approximately. So early February, mid-February, you want to start your seedlings if you live here in East Texas. And anywhere else, about a month before your last frost, whatever that would be. Um, so you start those inside get those going you know what I got a video I did on uh, on that I'll put that up here uh, I did it a couple of years ago I think but yeah start them inside and then by the time your last frost comes all your plants are you know about yay tall or whatever and um, they're ready to be put outside anyways so yeah I got that going on I have uh, well I gotta start my garden of course uh, I'm going to do something a little different this year with my tomatoes. Uh, I'm not going to plant as many tomatoes as I did uh, 
well, the other years. Um, not sure if we're going to be making tomato sauce. We still have tomato sauce from a couple years ago. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta finish that up too. But the, I'm sick and tired of the weeds and the grass growing in there, and there's a lot of uh, weed eating to do because I gotta go around all, all the T posts and everything. So I'm gonna be laying uh, weed fabric cloth down um, to help control the weeds and the grass. Uh, so I don't have to cut everywhere, just around the main areas, that's, that's about it. In about a month from now, I'll, uh, well, actually in a couple weeks, I'll be working in the garden. I'll have some more videos of uh, gardening videos, uh, me prepping and getting things ready in the garden. In here, not, well, the plans are kind of changed. Because of my, because I was late planting in here, uh, I probably won't get any broccoli and uh, cabbage this year. Uh, very, very late this year on that. I should have started way back in September, October. Uh, but because I was so busy with that rainwater harvesting system, I, I just couldn't get to it. Um, so, but anyways, I'm going to be planting in here in a couple of weeks, maybe in about three weeks, uh, potatoes. Uh, I'm not going to be planting potatoes in my garden anymore. It's not worth it. Uh, the weeds overtake it. It just, I've never seen weeds grow so well here. It's just incredible how, how well they grow here in East Texas. I just, it just blows me away. But it's better, I, I had better uh, harvest growing my uh, potatoes in here in these beds than I do out there. So I'm going to be planting, I got about four beds I can utilize for my potatoes and that should be enough for us. Um, I may plant a little out there, but we'll see. Um, but it's better, they, they actually produce better in here. So that's what's going on. That That's what will be going on is I have to get ready for my uh, garden within a couple of weeks. Once I start my seedlings indoors, then I start working on the garden, preparing things, getting things ready, the, the soil and everything. Um, so yeah, a lot of work to do there. And as far as our dogs, um, we used to feed them, we used to feed them, uh, well, this is the story behind what, what happened to our dogs. Come on, Tobe. You want to be on YouTube? Come here. You want to show everybody? Here, why don't you sit now? Sit nice. Come here, Mia. Come here. Come over here, Mia. Mia. Come here. Come here. Sit, 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 sit. <laughs> you don't want to sit? Okay, fine. So this is the story behind our dogs. When we first got the dogs, we fed them regular kibble food, dog food that you buy at your pet shop. Um, she started developing an elbow hygroma, it's called. It's just inflammation of the elbow. It looked like somebody shoved a tennis ball under her elbow and it looked nasty. She had trouble laying down and stuff. Um, my other dog, Toby, he uh, he was getting all kind of skin problems, very aggressive, uh, always in a bad mood, did never wanted to play. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, she's developing this elbow hygroma, and he's developing skin issues, itchy, and always licking himself and stuff, um, and bad attitude. Did a lot of research, and uh, people were feeding their dogs raw food. I thought, hmm, let me try that. We started feeding them raw chicken, raw beef, mostly raw chicken and beef, and eggs too, but eggs we just scramble it and give it to the dog. In other words, real food, okay? And voila, within no time, her elbow hygroma started to uh, get smaller and it just went away. Toby, his skin, most of his skin problems went away, almost all of it. Uh, but the thing that really blew me away is his attitude. He became playful, happy-go-lucky, just always wagging him this little nub and just <laughs> always happy, you know. Uh, and, it, and it just blew me away that that kibble dog food was making them sick and miserable. No wonder why when I was a kid, dogs would live into their late teens and early 20s. I, I hear that all the time. Now you're lucky to get uh, 12, 13 years out of a dog, you know, especially a big dog. Um, 
So it blew me away. So I started feeding them raw chicken and uh, hamburger and stuff like that. But I know it and they loved it, of course. But after a while, I, they started throwing up a lot and it was mostly because of the chicken. Um, so instead of giving them raw chicken, I started cooking it for them. And, uh, and, the, and the beef also. Uh, started cooking it for them. They loved it just the same. In fact, even better. Um, never had any issues since then. We throw in some, occasionally some rice, but not too much rice. You don't want too much carbohydrates. Um, um, so rice a little bit if you want. We put in there and uh, beans like you saw in the video. Uh, my wife cooks up a big old pot of beans in like one of those uh, Instapot things. And uh, then we put it in these little plastic containers and freeze them. And the night before we take them out, let them thaw out uh, at night, and then in the morning I'll just cook them up some uh, some hamburger and and um, and beans or some uh, chicken and beans. They love it, and it's very healthy for them. They've had no issues with their health and and and, and attitude or anything like that. Uh, very happy dogs now and very healthy. And I'm so grateful that I've learned this. Um, and I'm glad uh, it, it didn't go on longer than, uh, than it had to. Uh, I remember I had a dog uh, years ago. He lived to be about 13 years old. He died of cancer. Um, and he was always, I was always feeding him kibbles and canned dog food. And that's all I knew. You know, dogs eat dog food. But uh, I, I, if you have pets, stop giving them kibbles. That stuff is just poison. It really is. Uh, they, they have all kinds of skin issues and health issues and and cancer and you know what we're the same way if you keep eating processed food fast foods and all that stuff you're gonna end up being sick and miserable with high blood pressure uh, diabetes and cancer okay so if you don't eat the way God intended us to eat real food okay right here if you don't eat that way then you're gonna be sick and miserable just go go shopping and just look at everybody in the in the uh, or most everybody in the uh, shopping centers. The the obesity is getting ridiculous. Now I don't want to make fun of people and 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 or anything like that. I know you know everybody's got their own situation. But I remember growing up in the 70s, you really didn't see that too much. You know, occasionally you would see it, but not that much. Now it's just a common thing. So our food is killing us, just like it's killing our pets. Man-made food is killing our pets man-made food is killing us too so guys eat real food stop eating the processed junk um, keep that stuff to a very minimum and eat real food the way God intended us to eat and as far as them eating bones you saw how they ate those chicken bones and just chomped those things right down dogs can eat chicken bones but they have to be raw do not ever give them cooked chicken bones because they break and they splinter and they can poke their throat or their or their esophagus you know their 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 windpipe and all that all the way down uh, raw bones they can crunch those up and they break in little pieces and when it goes into their stomach as soon as it hits their stomach acid those bones turn to mush basically they just turn to like rubber mush and they easily get digested out of their system so don't be afraid to give your dogs um, raw raw chicken bones um, as far as beef bones um, if you want to give them some really big ones so they can't swallow it <laughs> um, that's good because if it's if they're small enough they're gonna try and swallow those and uh, that might be a problem with that but chicken bones you don't have to worry about that they're hollow they're very thin and as soon as it hits their stomach acid it turns into mush basically uh, so just to let you know All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video and my little talk here about what's going on and what I'll be doing in my garden. And I hope you enjoyed my little talk about the dogs. <laughs> Keep your pets healthy and you stay healthy. Eat real food and they need to eat real food. Okay, guys? So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Boy, here, give daddy a kiss. Oh, give it a kiss.
Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a good boy. What a good boy. <laughs> <laughs>